In this video, I will be reviewing Persona 5. Persona 5 has been critically acclaimed by tons of gaming news outlets, but did it actually live up to the immense hype? Was it as good as people said it was? Well, let's find out. What's up, YouTube? My name is Justin, this is the Den of Nerds, and this is our review of Persona 5. Before I jump into the meat of the review, I just wanted to quickly address some recent news. As some of you are aware, gathering footage for this review has been quite difficult, thanks to the way Atlas chose to handle streaming and footage capture on the PS4. In anticipation of people finding workarounds to their streaming restrictions, Atlas responded to the idea in an almost threatening way, telling users who broke their streaming guidelines to expect copyright strikes on their channels. Atlas has since come out and revised their guidelines, allowing players to record far more content than they previously could as well as apologizing for the previous threatening tone. I'd just like to applaud Atlas for actually listening to their fans, something a lot of game companies just refuse to do outright. Seriously, bravo. Unfortunately, this didn't happen in time for our review, and I'm still unable to record any footage on the PlayStation 4 or take screenshots, even with the streaming restrictions lifted. So we're unfortunately just gonna have to use whatever images we were able to find on the internet. Really sorry about that. But for now, let's go ahead and head on to the review. Persona 5 opens with your character, a typical Japanese high school student who we'll refer to as Joker for the rest of the review, recalling how he got into his current position. Walking home one night from school, Joker finds a drunk man assaulting a woman and naturally interferes. Unfortunately for him, the man is a powerful politician who uses his influence to get Joker arrested and tried for assault. Now on probation, he is expelled from school in his hometown and sent to Tokyo to a school better equipped to handle a student as problematic as he supposedly is. But after a run-in with a horrible teacher and an otherworldly encounter with a magical talking cat, Joker and his friends must claim the guise of phantom thieves, sneaking into otherworldly palaces and stealing the hearts of terrible villains, forcing them to change their ways. The plot seems totally out of left field to begin with, but Persona 5 manages to make such a strange plot feel engaging and charming. It was incredibly interesting seeing the rogues gallery of evil villains I was set to take down, and pretty much every villain you're up against has done some very real, very awful things that actively make you want to go after them. Persona 5's plot gets incredibly dark at times, and as a result the story ends up being something that's very easy to get invested into. The themes and issues that Persona 5 deals with, despite its fantastical dungeon setting, are honestly fairly grounded, relatable, and believable, even in the side missions. The story drives the player to actually want to be a phantom thief, to want to accomplish their goals, to want to do good, and to want to complete all of the side quests along the way. So many games can make people feel as though side quests outside of the narrative are a waste of time, but Persona 5 manages to fantastically weave them into the plot's overarching goal. This excellent story is shored up by an incredibly strong supporting cast that the player will interact with between dungeons as they try to balance being a phantom thief and being a typical Japanese high school student. Persona 5 provides plenty of side characters to interact with on the streets of Tokyo. Spending time with some of these interesting confidants, such as a disgraced politician, a former Yakuza member, and a shogi idol, not only provides some excellent self-contained stories, but also provides several tangible benefits to help with living your social life and crawling through the game's many dungeons. The party members the player encounters might be one of the best cast of misfits I've seen in an RPG yet, with the characters all going through some surprising character development both through the story and with the optional social links that further expand their character. Just like the other side characters, becoming friends with your main party offers tons of tangible benefits in battle and does it in such a way that makes the player actually feel like the Phantom Thieves are becoming close friends and learning to function as a more effective team together. Players will need to be careful though, considering Persona 5 only gives you a limited number of days to accomplish your objectives. Some characters also cannot be socialized with until you either reach a certain date, or level up one of your five social stats through various things like seeing movies, crafting thieves tools, answering questions in class, and eating some really big ass burgers. The limited number of days gives the player a sense of urgency even outside of the dungeons in Persona 5, and you will constantly be trying to make the best decisions to ensure that none of your time is ever wasted. 
Graphically, Persona 5 isn't an impressive technical achievement on the PlayStation 4, but that doesn't mean the game looks bad. The game oozes style in every possible aspect. Menu designs pop. Battle animations are fluid and fast. Character designs for the main supporting cast are all incredibly distinct as well, to the point that I couldn't possibly mistake Persona 5 for any other quote-unquote stereotypical anime games, or even any other title in the Persona series. The little touches Atlas has chosen to add to the character animations are a welcome touch as well. Joker constantly adjusting his gloves, putting away his umbrella when he walks under an awning, Little things like this punctuate Persona 5 in tons of ways and really help make these characters feel distinct and alive. The designs of the many Personas that the main character will equip are unforgettable as well. Angels, demons, monstrous snowmen, gods from various religions. Persona 5 gives you an excellent stable of what can best be described as demon Pokemon to mess around with and have join your party be it through convincing them to join your party at the end of a battle, or by simply fusing two personas in a very gruesome way to make an even more powerful one. The system is deep and fully customizable, allowing you to always ensure that you'll have the right persona for whatever job you need to tackle. It adds an excellent depth of strategy to an already excellent turn-based battle system. Despite being turn-based, battles in Persona 5 are fluid and rarely boring. There's always a learning period when you enter every dungeon to find a monster's weakness. Once you've got a good grasp of your surroundings, you'll be swapping out party members and taking down all of your enemies in single turns, exploiting their weaknesses with both precision and grace. Knives, guns, and personas make up your varied arsenal in Persona 5, and finding the right tools and knowledge to make what was once an incredibly difficult dungeon into a breeze is satisfying every single time and with dungeons themselves even requiring stealth with careful ambushes of your opponent, you'll be leaving every encounter feeling like a professional Phantom Thief. The battles in World of Persona 5 are really enhanced by the game's amazing soundtrack, which I'm actually listening to as I write this review. With a clear acid jazz influence, Persona 5 provides a soundtrack that's even enjoyable to listen to outside of the game. The track's Life Will Change and the final boss theme, Rivers in the Desert, make headway as two of the biggest standout tracks. But Persona 5's attention to sound design is present in even some of the smallest details, with the sound team even going as far as to record distinct music for each retro video game you're able to play. With 110 songs, Persona 5's monumental soundtrack is consistently enjoyable to listen to. I've even found myself humming the battle theme at length even outside of my time in the game. Even despite all of this excellence, Persona 5 does have a couple problems worth mentioning. The stealth system the player uses to get through the dungeons can be a little touchy at times. There were occasions I found myself accidentally going around corners when I didn't mean to. I never managed to get caught as a result of this, but my heart did skip a beat pretty much every time, and it made me a little hesitant on pressing the left analog stick at all. The last social link the player can obtain also arrives pretty late, and is unfortunately for a key party member. I wasn't adequately prepared with the maxed out social stat I needed, and by the time I finally got it, it was already too late in the game to make that party member useful. Which was a shame, because they seemed like a very interesting character to get to know. I guess there's always New Game Plus, but still. There's also two characters that have caused a stir with some players as well. Basically sort of providing homophobia as a punchline to a joke. They only show up a couple times, but both of their appearances are in poor taste and they aren't really funny regardless. There's also quite a few instances where you enter a stretch of story for days where you can't partake in any side activities in between the story. If you're not prepared for these, it can get a little annoying, especially when you're about to max a social link. If an Ultimate Edition of Persona 5 is released as rumored, Atlas could likely fix all of these little issues, and the game would honestly be much better for it. But despite all of these flaws I've mentioned, Persona 5 is still the best JRPG released in years, and an incredibly strong contender for Game of the Year. Exciting battles, an excellent soundtrack, a lovable and interesting cast of characters, unique settings, Persona 5 really seems like it has it all. It's very rare for a game to grab me so much that upon completion I immediately hop into New Game Plus. 
Even knowing how things are going to turn out, and how the characters are, I find myself falling in love with Persona 5's cast all over again. The Phantom Thieves have stolen my heart, as well as the hearts of many others, and the fact that Persona 5 is a game that improves upon every aspect of the previous entries in the series isn't just impressive, it's something that a ton of game companies out there simply wish they'd be able to consistently accomplish. It has truly set a new gold standard for JRPGs, bar none. I never saw this coming, and I struggled for quite a long time deciding on what score to give this game. But after finishing it, diving straight into New Game Plus, and sneaking another 20 hours into that so far, the answer is clear. I am proud to award Persona 5 with the Den of Nerds very first 10 out of 10. Stellar. If you own a PS4 or PS3, and you don't have this game yet, you are absolutely missing out on one of the best Sony exclusives in years. I hope you all enjoyed our review of Persona 5. If you like this review, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more gaming news and reviews, as well as things for comics, movies, Star Wars, wherever you need. As always, we appreciate your continued support, hope you're all having an awesome and nerdy day, and I'll catch you later. Oh, and P.S., since I know some of you will likely be asking me in the comments, Makoto is best girl.